Hi, it's Ian from HT2 Labs here. We're going to expand on our first video now and take another look at visualizations and the different things that we can do with them. In this video, we're going to look at a different type of visualization and some additional features that weren't checked off in the first video. We can see our original visualization here on our dashboard. We follow the same steps as we did before and head over to the menu item on the left and click visualize. This time, when we add new, we're going to choose a line graph because we want to measure changes in performance and behaviours over a period of time. Just like before, we're going to give these a label, a title, and the name the y-axis and the x-axis. I've actually copy and pasted this to save a bit of time. It's going to be courses completed versus calls made versus leads created. We're going to use three series in this graph. For the y-axis, this will be the counts. And the excesses will be time. Just like before, we're going to head over to the right hand side and change this to look back over the last one year. Straight away we can see some data on the graph, but at this point this isn't of any use to us. This time we're going to head over to the series tab and we're going to start building our first series. First one we're going to call leads created. Now this is in relation to our sales data. Again, this is available from HT2. Uh, if you wish to use it for your own training, um, this can be available on request and you can have this uh, to either mimic what we're doing or simply just to have a play around in Learning Locker. For the verb that we're interested in, I'm going to again use the drill down uh, did and click into the tab here and have a look for leads created. So the created verb here. Again, we can see that the data has changed on the right hand side. Now this time, uh, we're actually going to add another query to the graph, which is click on this bu button here. This will give you a second series. We can see that already appearing on the graph, but of course, we haven't filtered it down. So at this point, it's fairly meaningless. This time, uh, we're actually going to look at course completions. So we're going to label this up and then choose our filters. Again, we need to choose uh, the store that we're interested in. Uh, this is always important. Uh, you may have multiple stores uh, in your LRS at some point, And so it's important to use one or more of these depending on what you need. And again, we're going to choose our verb here. Uh, and this time it's the familiar completed one that we've seen before. And again, we see the data change. Finally, we're going to add our third series using the familiar add query button and again going into our labels. This time we're going to have calls made, choose our store and the verb that we're interested in. In this case, it's called. Now we can actually see some useful data. Now you often might find that a graph like this, uh, you may be familiar with it uh, in the world that you're currently in. Um, this is a good way of being able to monitor trends and changes in behavior. We can see that um, as courses, uh, more courses were completed by more users over time, we start to see an increase in the number of calls made um, by the learners, um, making more calls, maybe more confident on the phone. We can see the number of leads created are going up. Although it's marginal at first, we can see a positive improvement um, and a noticeable consistency as a result of the courses being completed. Now, of course, the problem with this data is it's a static data set. Of course, in your world, your likelihood is that you've got a constant stream of data. And so you won't see something like this, where essentially everything stops and all of the data just falls off a cliff. However, um, for this video, it does give us an opportunity to maybe tidy up the graph and look at some of the other features that are available. If we click on the when drill down here on the left hand side, you'll be familiar with this symbol. Uh, and of course, any of these here looking at less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. Now this relates to uh, a time stamp that we're interested in. And when we click on this tab here, we'll get presented uh, with a typical calendar. And for the purposes of this, we're going to look at uh, everything um, that happened prior to the 30th of April. Now remember, we do have three series, so we do need to, for this particular graph, we do need to repeat this. 
in some of the visualizations, you'll find that you can actually do this uh, at the um, at the axis level. But for this one, we need to do it on each uh, each line individually. So again, we'll go back to here, choose the thirtieth, and then finally on our leads created, we do the same, and we we'll tidy some of this data up, make it a little bit easier to read. But again, we can see um, that. You know, perhaps um, there are some correlations here uh, between the courses being completed and then the number of leads and the number of calls being made by each of the learners. Now, just like we did before, we now need to add this to our dashboard. So go back to the dashboards page. We can see our original graph here. If we remember, we go to the add widget button and we're presented with another option. We can drag this maybe up alongside here, click on the left hand button here, and then on settings, we'll give it a title. Again, I've copy and pasted in order to save a little bit of time. And we can see here both of our visualization options in a drop down uh, underneath. If we click on that, we have our brand new visualization alongside it, and we can start to build a bit of a picture and tell a story uh, about what's happening with our learners maybe how effective our course has been, uh, and also if there's any interventions that we need to make uh, and changes that might need to happen to any of the courses uh, that are currently in place. I hope you've enjoyed the video uh, and you've got a better understanding of the kind of things that you can do with Learning Locker. Of course, there are so many possibilities with some of the data that you might have, um, but I hope at least this has given you a good starting point um, to start building your own dashboards uh, and understanding your data. Thank you for watching.